automotive design. Well, the latest example of that is this Quavali Mangusta, a machine with an intricate heritage, over-the-top style, as well as a few surprises. In other words, now that's Italian. Indeed, wherever you go, the 2000 Cavalli Mangusta will turn heads and raise a few questions. The number one being, what is it? Well, the short answer goes like this. The original Mangusta began life in the mid-1960s under the care of designer Giorgio Giugiaro and car builder Alejandro de Tommaso. The first generation Mangusta ended production in 1970, but its demise led de Tommaso to produce perhaps its best known car ever, the Pantera. In 1998, the Cavalli Automotive Group signed an agreement with De Tommaso to begin manufacturing a new Mangusta. This one designed by Marcello Gandini, designer of the Lamborghini Countach and Diablo, and also built a car in Modena, Italy. Gandini wanted the Mangusta's bold styling to match the car's potential under the hood, and there's plenty of that. And there also resides the surprise we mentioned earlier. It's Ford's 4.6 liter twin cam 32 valve V8. The very same one found under the hood of the SVT Mustang Cobra. And with 320 horsepower and 314 pound feet of torque, it propelled the Mangusta to 60 in 5.7 seconds and on through the quarter mile in 14.3 seconds at 101 miles per hour. Our drivers love the positive race car feel of the heavy clutch and the precision of the five-speed manual transmission. But the lack of ABS was a setback to the 12-inch ventilated disc with four-piston Brembo calipers at the corners as our stops from 60 in the Mangusta came in at a rather longish 138 feet. And with pedal feedback minimal, it was tricky to determine a proper threshold of braking before locking the tires. But once you find that threshold, stopping distances are very consistent. And so were staff reactions to handling at Summit Point's naughty Jefferson circuit. The Mangusta handles track work well. Cornering is flat, with the optional 18-inch Michelin pilots providing plenty of grip. With just the right touch of understeer dialed in, the Mangusta's rear quarter stayed firmly planted. The fully independent multi-link suspension with double wishbones, coil springs, and anti-roll bars give the car a well-balanced feel in rapid side-to-side -side transitions. The steering feels nicely weighted, but feedback is a little soft. Off track, the Mangusta offers a sporting but civilized ride as the galvanized box steel frame gives the Mangusta a torsionally stiff platform to ride on. This keeps body flex and cow shake to the barest minimum, which is especially important when using composite molded body panels like the Mangusta. The Mangusta also offers two open top configurations for your driving pleasure with a roof system called Rototop. For a Targa type experience, remove the center section and store it in the trunk. To go for the full blown roadster effect, simply push a button and watch the Targa top and rear window disappear behind the seats. No tonneau cover is needed, but you might want to carry a small rag as our top leaks in downpours. The Mangusta's interior is leather lined and sports car tight with supportive power and manual adjust buckets, facing a stylish and comprehensive Mustang flavored gauge cluster. The Ford influence is also found in the Visteon supplied climate control, while the stereo underneath is a Nakamichi with a six disc in dash changer. Cavalli calls the Mangusta a two plus two, but trust us, the rear seats are for storage only. When it comes to paying up, the $82,000 sticker price attached to R2000 Cavalli Mangusta tester can be looked at in two ways. It's kind of pricey for any car with Mustang power. But on the other hand, it's on the order of half that of pure Italian alternatives. And again, right in line with the thinking behind the original Mangusta and Pantera. And like those De Tommaso efforts, the 2000 Cavalli Mangusta 2 Plus 2 is a unique hands across the sea package. And one where American and Italian blood easily mix to produce passion. Do anti-lock brakes always reduce your stopping distance in emergency situations? A new government study concludes that except on loose surfaces like sand and snow, all panic stops can be shorter with four-wheel anti-lock brakes than without. Shorter on wet pavement and shorter on dry pavement. Remember, ABS works best when you stomp the brake pedal, stay on the brake pedal, and steer where you want to go.